Okay, today uh, we're gonna show you the new feature of our GISP interface, which means we start to support secondary GPIB address function. I think from uh, 2.4, since we start to introduce our local GPIB USB interface solution, customer keep providing feedback to us said that they need this feature because some, uh, I think some modular instruments or some mass spec or gas chromatography system need this kind of functions. And widely used instrument need this function. I think it's fast. The instrument, the instrument is called CMU. As you can see here, the instrument, this instrument is widely used for cell phone R and D and the manufacturing all over the world. And uh, the only reason we cannot support this feature is just because this kind of instrument is too expensive and very hard to get one. And very lucky this time we got one of the CMU 200 from our from our customer, and uh, they permit us to keep this instrument for two weeks. We have chance to add this feature into our GPIB USB uh, interface. And as you can see, we have an RF cable here connected to a cell phone. And uh, we're going to connect this CMU200 with our PC using F82350, our GPIB USB interface, and run a software uh, on the PC side to show you the communication between this instrument and the PC is well, so let's move to the PC side. <laughs> okay. okay, you can see here is a Motorola cell phone and the RF cable is connected here. On the PC side, the software we are running here is the Agilent IO library. The first thing is we're going to connect the GPIB interface to the PC and search for new instruments. OK, you hear the sound, which means the GPIB card is installed on the PC. And it began to it start to find the new GPIB interface and the scanning for the instrument connect to PC. As we said, since CMU200 need secondary GPIB address function, which means you will see more than one instrument connected to the PC now. You can see here, we found nine different GPIB instrument connected to your PC. They all share the same primary GPIB address, as you can see here, the 19 primary GPIB address. But their secondary GPIB address are different. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. OK, so that means we have found all the secondary GPIB instruments. And we start to run the software now. Uh, this software is called CMU Go. We, you can download it from Rodi Schwartz's website and uh, use this software to do some tests with your cell phone. We build up a very simple test sequence, as you can see here, just four steps. Basically initializing GSM call setup, GSM call release, and the test end. I'm sorry here because I'm not an RF test engineer, so I do not know much about what this item means. I think they just set up a GSM call and to see if the uh, call is successful or not. So let's run the test. I press the start button and the software is beginning to run. After the initializing, now the software is waiting for the call from the cell phone. So I just put up my cell phone and the dial a number. 
Let's see the cell phone is dairy. Okay. The call is success. And I press the proceed button to move on the test. And yes, we pass all the tests here. Okay, so this short example shows that uh, you can use our GPIB USB interface to work with the instruments which need a secondary GPIB address feature. And uh, the GPIB interface works well with the software from either Agilent or other third-party vendors like Rodi Schwartz. And uh, the thing I want to say here is uh, when you're using our GPIB USB interface, please let us know your feedback and uh, if there is something we can improve, we will certainly do it and uh, we are willing to hear any feedback from you to help us improve the performance of our GPIB interface. And now I think the new firmware is available from us. So if you need these features, write an email to us at bmjd.teth at gmail.com and let us know your serial number of your GPIB USB interface and we will generate the new firmware to you so you can start to use all these new features. Thank you.